Hey. Nice to see everybody today. So today, I thought we would start a pretty cool science project called Simple Circuits, Simple Electrical Circuits. First of all, I'd like to say hello to all of my Wayne Township students and teachers that are home learning about science. And before we get started too much on this particular activity, I hope everybody has started their own science journal. You see, a science journal is something you need. This will be a perfect time to start it because my motto, as you see in my shirt right here, is science is for everyone. And I'm going to add that science is for everyone everywhere, even at home. The thing that I love about science is that you don't need a classroom, you don't need a teacher, all you need is curiosity and, and questions and maybe a bird every once in a while. Uh, scientists love to solve problems and we're also are really curious. So we like to make our observations and try to learn about things we see in the world and think, huh, I read about that, is it true? So to be a scientist, you have to do science. And to do science, all you need is a curious mind and some observation skills. What do you see? What do you hear? What do you feel? What do you touch? And uh, I'll tell you, uh, I like to do it with my journal. So let me show you this journal because you guys can start your own journal and it's pretty simple. All you need is a, uh, a notebook of some sort. And uh, let's see here. Here's my notebook. This is a one man operation, so it gets to be a little bit tricky. <laughs> I try to do it, here we go. So here's my science journal. And uh, let me sit back down here and I'll show you what I mean by it. And so in my science journal, it's pretty simple. All I've done is I have a page about what I think about science and I got some blank pages. And I like to always keep track of questions, questions I might have. Like, you know, why does the moon always seem to follow me at night when I'm walking down the road? Or, you know, why, why do my glasses fog up? And, you know, who's smarter, a cat or a dog? Or <laughs> why does water boil? Does it boil quicker if it's hot or if it's cold? These are just questions that come to me. But I also like to keep track of my observations. For example, uh, I've done some projects on uh, water drops and viruses. And so I just like to write these down. This is some of the things I did last week. And here's something on my energy pyramid and my fish room and paper rockets and my airplanes. And so today we're gonna to be doing simple circuits. And so let me see if I can get this so we can see it a little bit better. So for simple circuits, the first thing I wanna hopefully do is see if we can write about something. What is a simple circuit? So a simple circuit is pretty easy to understand, but I'm gonna let you know about a secret. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's kind of like a secret code. And so here is something I made earlier today. This is a secret code of some different symbols. Not really secret, but if you learn these symbols, for example, we have a wire, a wire connector, a switch, a battery, and a light bulb. And so these are symbols that if you learn, even in you know the third and fourth grade, you can start to understand how scientists, how engineers, how electricians learn about electricity. So let's see if I can uh, get this going here. So here is my simple circuit. So I'm gonna start with a wire and a connector. And I'm gonna connect that to an appliance, in this case, it's going to be a light bulb. This is a symbol for a light bulb. A circle with some zigzag and another connector. Now I'm going to bring this wire down. And if I bring it over here, I'm going to connect it to something else. Now, you don't, I don't know, what do you think? In this circuit, the word circuit means circle, circle. If this circle would continue, would all the energy go through it? And the answer is no, <laughs> because we had some gaps. See these gaps right here? Well, let's put a source of energy. So this is going to be a symbol for a battery. And I'll show you this battery. Here is a battery. Batteries come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. And there was an Italian scientist by the name of Volta who made a pile, a battery pile. He's, he is credited with making the first battery. 
he'd be amazed to see all the different types of batteries you see here. And to honor Volta, we measure batteries in volts. Let's see if I can find the volts here. Every time you find a battery, the first thing you want to do is find out what the volts is. You can see that's 1.5 volts. And so is this one, 1.5 volts. So a battery can be different sizes and have the same amount of volts. So this is going to be our battery. I'll put it right here like this, battery. And this is going to be our appliance, or in this case, it's going to be a bulb. And now we have a wire or a path. Now, would this light up? And the answer is, I don't think so, because we have a gap right here. And this is what we're going to put in here. I bet you know what this is already. That is a switch. And here it's open. And if I close it, and then it's closed. And when the switch is closed, that lets the electricity flow through our system. Okay, so here, let me, let me see if I can get this going. I'm gonna raise this up just a little bit and sit down right here, because we're gonna make some things, I hope. Let's see here, here we go. All right, so what I'm gonna try to do is make something right here so you can see it. And we're gonna, it's pretty simple. We can take apart a flashlight and it should have all those parts I just talked about. And so here's my switch on the bottom. Open this up and uh, on the bottom there's some, this one's kind of a tougher one to open up, but there is, uh, I think I'll pass on that one. This one's uh, closed up, but almost every flashlight you have at home, you should be able to take it apart, find the light, the appliance, the batteries, and even the, uh, the uh, wires that connect it. Um, let's take a look at some of these batteries. This one says nine volts. So a nine volt battery will have more voltage than a one and a half and it should brighten up. I got a couple different lights here. Most lights you see now these days are an LED, which stands for light emitting diode. And I got some of those to show you. They're kind of cool. Uh, one thing about a light emitting diode it only lets electricity flow in one direction. So if you have one of these, you might want to flip it around to see if it works. I happen to have an incandescent light. Check this one, this guy right here. This incandescent light, a little bitty light right here, and I have a battery. Let's see. I think I have everything I need for this. Here is my, uh, let's see here if I can find a way to get this to, to energize. Here is, uh, I'll put this on the bottom. There's a contact. All batteries have a plus and a minus. Let's try and bend this down. And uh, kids in Wayne Township, you've done this with me many times. Let's see what happens when I touch it. And yes, that's so cool. So you see how it's going through it. And you notice I'm not getting burned. There's two things we got to worry about when we're doing electricity. Number one is if you use a battery, 1.5 volts, you're probably not going to cause any problem. Never do something like this with an outlet in your house. That's 110 volts and you will get burned. The other thing is I have a load or something that's working on here. So there's one way to do that. Let's see, this is kind of cool. What's gonna happen if I take a, hmm, some scissors and I touch the scissors to the end, there's an open switch and if I close it, oh, look at that. So there's something on these scissors, something on these scissors that lets electricity go through it. And there was scientists who studied that. This is called an insulator. When I touch it, uh, let's see about the rubber. What do you predict will happen when I touch the rubber here? Ah, so we start to understand that some things are maybe insulators and some things are conductors. So the word conductor and insulator Some things let electricity go through it, and some things stop electricity going through. Insulators and conductors. You know, I, I, I made this thing right here, it's kind of cool. This is a, I hope you can see this. Let's see if I can adjust it, maybe move it out a little bit. Here we go. So what I have here is um, a board I made out of cardboard. And if we look, you can notice there's my source. And here's some LED lights, I'll push them back up. Some LED lights, hope I didn't break the circuit. And if I put something in between here, let's just test this, see if this will come on. Let's test it right here so you can see it. 
with only one camera. This gets to be real interesting to try to show you all this stuff. Here we go. Ready? And up. Oh, they came on. Nice. Try that again. Ready? And on. On, off. Open circuit, closed circuit. Open circuit, closed circuit. So the way I got this set up, we can test things. Like, what happens if I put this in between here, these two? Metal, and look, it comes on. That's a cool. So you can make yourself an insulator and a conductor tester. Make sure your circuit works first. Let's try it between these two. Nope, nothing. Hey, what about my ring? Let's see. I have this uh, uh, gold ring right here. Let's see if I can get this. I wonder if gold's a conductor. Let's see here. I'm going to hook this on my ring and come across here. Let's see. Uh, and touch the ring. And look at that. I don't know if you can see that or not, I'll hook them back up so you can see. My ring is a conductor of electricity. It's got the gold in it. There we go. Cool. Look at that. Check it out. And so this is a way to test things that go through the circuit, that go around a circle. Now, I got another one I made just for fun. Uh, uh, this one, check it out. I added some other things to it, but I got my, let's see if we can find everything. I got a source, a path, an appliance, a light, and then down here are my two connectors. Now I'm using fancy wires. I'll show you a way to do that in just a minute. You don't even need wires. So if I touch it, let's see if these light up. Yes. Oh yeah. See the light up over here. If I touch them, you see that lights up. Yes. All right, so here's my test. What if we test some things through here? And if the light comes on, I'll switch this so you can see it better. If the light comes on, that means it's a conductor. Let's try my, my uh, ink pen. Let's see, touch it. Ink and ink. Yes, my ink pen. The metal of my ink pen. Well, let's try a pencil. Now, what I did on this pencil, if I touch the paint, nothing. If I touch the eraser, lead, nothing. Actually, it's not really lead. Let's call it graphite, because I happen to know that graphite is a conductor of electricity. So I took this pencil and I sharpened this end off. Now I've connected it, and that graphite goes all through the pencil. Let's see what happens. Predict what you think will happen when I touch this. Let's find out, shall we? Look at that. A pencil, the wood, insulator. The paint, an insulator the graphite a conductor so that's kind of a cool thing you can make one of these pretty simply out of cardboard and just a battery and batteries come in all kind of sizes and all kind of shapes and in fact uh, uh, what i like to <laughs> what i like to do is i like to look to understand this i like to look at a light bulb so let's let me let's get over here and see if we can draw a light bulb um, you can learn a lot about electricity by Taking a look at a light bulb. So we have a light bulb right here. Let's see, I'll start right about here. And a light bulb at the bottom, and you can look at this yourself, has a conductor. And then it's got this kind of screw in. And, you know, funny thing is, Thomas Edison did not invent the light bulb, but he did, in, he improved the light bulb, but he did invent the screw in that you see right there. And so there's actually a piece of glass right here. So you have a conductor, then an insulator, and then another conductor and then we have a wire coming up here and a wire coming out of the side of the socket and he spent all kind of time see now electricity goes in the bottom up this post now it's got to get across there somehow and to get across there and you can draw this in fact take a look at a light bulb in your house have your mom and dad help you and you'll notice that there's this little guy right here going across here that's the filament and now Electricity comes when you screw this in, electricity goes in the bottom, goes up the post, across the filament, down and out the side. Out the side. Oh, guess what? That would burn up real quick in oxygen. So Thomas Edison found a way to make a vacuum and put glass around it. And when you put glass around it, now it will light up when energy goes through it. A circuit in and out, in and out. In fact, every appliance you have is a circuit of some sort that lets electricity in, electricity out. Okay, so let's see, uh, let me see if we can try something here. What I'd like to do is show you how you can make a simple circuit just with a few things like aluminum foil, a light, some tape, and a battery. 
Okay, let's see what can get, what's going on here. Let me see. We get this going, and uh, all right. So we know that aluminum foil is a conductor. Now I'll tell you what you don't ever want to do is just test this first. Is okay to hold this on the end. So now I'm. I like to crunch up the end to make a little little bump for it to hold on to. Here's one end right there. And let's do the other side over here. A little bump so we can tape that on there. Now when I put this on here, and I put this on here, what I've done is I've extended Volta's two terminals. The plus goes all the way down here, and the minus goes all the way down here. So if this works, I wonder what's gonna happen if I put, don't let them touch, if I put a light across here, let's see. Oh, I, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's just barely coming on. Let's see if I can get it. Here we go, let's try it again, ready? Put it up closer so you can see it. Can you see that? It's starting to light up right about there, see it? So we got a circuit going all the way through there. Now, depending on how strong your battery is, is gonna be how much that lights up. I bet if I tried a nine volt battery, <laughs> Let's see what's gonna happen with this nine volt battery. Let's put this guy here. Well, let's just do it across to see first what happens, right? Here and here. Wow, nine volts is a lot brighter <laughs> than one and a half volts. In fact, a lot brighter. And so our simple circuit, whatever battery you use, the one thing you don't wanna do is this. This is how, the second way you can get hurt with this kind of stuff is using something from the wall, don't do that. Or number two, short circuiting. This is called a short. If I touch this here, that's gonna get hot. And the reason it's gonna get hot is because there's nothing using electricity. So, I mean, there's two ways to learn science. You can listen to me or you can cause some problems. This will cause a problem. So make sure you don't just go like that because that will short circuit out, get hot and could burn you or cause a fire. Let's go back to our, uh, our circuit here. So I put this down like this. Let's go ahead and put a piece of tape on here like this. Tape this side on this side right over here. Now you can put this on a piece of cardboard. So now I got my terminal coming off like that. Let me get my other piece over here. Now if you have wire, wire works, but I like using aluminum foil because eh, it's easy to find. So here's my second terminal. I'll make sure you don't touch these. And every time you add something, they're not jumping across here. Don't let them jump across. Every time you add something, you should probably test it. Let's test it right here, ready? One, two, three, and yes. Ha! Huh. And you could set up all kind of cool, simple circuits. So I'm gonna put that down there. Oh, you know what? Let me tape this on here. I'm gonna, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put this down here, tape it right there. Okay, so I'm just doing this on my table. You can do it on cardboard. Here we go. And every time you tape something, check your circuit, see if it still works. Let's see, ready? And yes, yes. But here's how I'm gonna tear this apart because I wanna do something kind of cool. I wanna make a, uh, I think I wanna make a switch. Uh, to make my switch, I think what I'll do is I'll use another piece of foil over here and I'm gonna tape this foil. Hey, let me ask you this. This is a conductor, that's a conductor. I don't wanna put the tape down in between because tape is an insulator. So I'm gonna put that down and tape over it. So now I have metal on metal. And let's test it, let's see. Open switch, close switch. Open, close. Open, close. Now I'll tell you, it's kinda cool. Almost everything in your house is on a circuit, all your electricity. In fact, without electricity, let me switch the cameras back around. Without electricity, we wouldn't be able to do a lot of things. For example, even walk. Electricity makes our muscles move. Electricity makes our muscles move. Electricity makes all of our appliances, our computers, our TV. I can't even move my arm because a little bit of electricity goes in there and stimulates my muscles to contract. Electricity is amazing. And a lot of people like Thomas Edison and Michael Faraday and so many more people that you can learn about by getting online and learning about uh, how electricity and simple circuits work and the simple circuits all through your house. So today's lesson was on electricity and simple circuits. You know, uh, Wayne Township kids, I miss you and uh, I wish we could be in the classroom, but hey, 
You can do science anywhere and everywhere, even at home, with a few things like this, batteries, aluminum foil. The two things that I want to warn you, don't use anything coming out of the wall because that's 110 volts. This is only one and a half volts. And remember what a short circuit is. You don't want a short circuit. You want to have something to use the power. Hey, this is Rick Croslin. I'm going to write some more notes in my science journal. This will be a perfect time for you to set up a science journal. Here's a question for today. I wonder if, if I use three light bulbs in my simple circuit, will they be three times brighter or three times less? I don't know. Maybe that's a question for you to figure out. I'll see you next time. Simple circuits.